This next lab asks you to configure simple VLANs. The lab setup is pretty easy, but if you care anything about doing the lab with CML free, you'll want to watch the tail end of the video. Let's jump in. So this lab has to do with the same content you'll find in the CCNA Official Cert Guides, Volume 1, Part 3, Chapter 8. And this lab is called Basic VLANs, and here's the direct link to the lab. And if you go to the blog page of that lab, at the top you'll see an introduction with scenario and tasks, basically what we want you to do with this lab. Then in the middle, very briefly, it says, hey, do the lab. You can use Cisco Packet Tracer or Cisco Modeling Labs if you'd like to do it for yourself. And then the bottom of the page has the answer and an explanation as to why I think that answer is correct. This video introduces the lab. Now, you're better off reading the blog page because you'll learn more doing it that way. This video is meant to take you deeper and to clarify things, all right? So take a look at it. There's also an associated lab review video. Same deal. It takes you a little deeper. Let's talk through the lab topology for a moment. We've got switch SW1. It's got four ports. The port IDs end in 1, 2, 3, and 4. And they connect to PCs 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the last digit of the interface ID matches the PC number for perspective. Just easy to keep up with. Now the lab also shows the initial config and there's not much to see there because the initial config just confirms that all the ports are not down. They're no shutdown or they're administratively enabled. It also mentions the fact that the PCs are pre-configured with IP addresses that match the diagram. So PC1 and PC2 are configured to be in the same subnet. PC3 and 4 are in a different subnet. And because of the VLAN design, PC1 and 2 are supposed to be in the same subnet, and they should be able to ping each other at the end of lab. And similarly, PC3 and 4, they're in the same VLAN, they should be in the same subnet, and they are. So they'll be able to ping each other at the end of lab. So the lab instructions are pretty simple. All ports are to be static access ports. That is, we configure them to be access ports. They should be in the VLANs shown above now. So on the left, the two left-hand ports in VLAN 10, the two right-hand ports in VLAN 20, and configure the VLANs first and then place the interfaces in the VLANs. That's what item number three refers to. So you're ready? You can go ahead and do the lab. If you're using Cisco Packet Tracer, I have nothing more to tell you, but if you're gonna use Cisco Modeling Labs, keep watching for a few more hints. The first thing I need to tell you about for CML Free is this is the diagram you see on the lab blog page, but CML can't use those same interface IDs. So here we have a table that shows us the lab interface IDs per the lab exercise and what CML will show you if you import the CML file. And just to show you visually, you see the interface IDs up here. I'll replace those now with the interface IDs you'll see in CML. So the code here is it's Ethernet interfaces, and the last digit is one less than what you see in the original diagram. All right, so that's the code. And by the way, there's no additional initial configuration in the CML file versus what the lab exercise tells you. Now the CML file uses a feature that I call one router is many hosts. And if you hear about this, this might be the first time you've heard about it, all right? And if you hear about it and you say, I don't like that, no, it's just too confusing, then just don't test from the host. Don't do that part of the verification. Or if you think, you know, I might be able to do that, so try it a little bit, all right? You're a little confused, but you could try it. Or if you say, you know, that's pretty cool, yeah, go ahead and try testing from the host. But you don't have to do any testing and verification from the host. So what am I talking about here? This is the diagram that you'll see in CML with the four hosts out to the side. And at the end, you could ping and see what works from these endpoint devices to see if things match up to the VLAN design, all right? But what I've implemented in CML because of the node count limitations in CML free is this. Visually, imagine the four hosts a little bit lower on the page, and I replace them with a single router. That single router counts as one node. CML free only lets you have five active nodes at a time. So here's the deal. I can make that one router act like four different hosts from the perspective of how they forward packets. 
so you can test as if you've got four separate hosts. Now, I've got two other videos that go into far more depth on this, and if you've not seen those and you think, hey, I might want to try that, you should watch those videos, all right? It's really too tricky to try without watching those. But, but here's the kind of thing you could do. You get to the console of that one router and do ping VRF host one if you want to ping as if you are host number one or PC one. Or ping VRF host two if you want to ping as if you are host number two. Now the phrasing here uses host one, two, three, and four as kind of generic names to match up to PCs one, two, three, and four. So you could give it a try or not if you'd like to do that. So Again, the motivation here is that many labs will need more than five nodes. CML3 limits us to only five. So look up above my head right now. There should be a link there. Look in the description for the links to the two videos that tell you more about routers as many hosts. Hope you enjoyed that intro video. Get into lab. Try it. Hey, I'm showing you a couple of videos popping up on the screen here, too, that are just suggestions for the next videos to watch. But honestly... Let's go do lab. All right. Subscribe if you haven't already. Talk to you soon.